Hello and welcome to Droix. A quick video today of the Moyu Mini Retro Gaming Handheld. We will unbox it, check out its features on the OS and test some emulators to see how well this cheaper priced handheld runs them. Let's start with the unboxing. The Mayu Mini comes in its own custom hard shell case which keeps everything protected. Inside is a user guide in full English and Chinese languages with instructions on how to use the handheld. Next we have the Mayu Mini handheld, we will show it in more detail shortly. And in the case's side pocket is a USB SD card reader for copying games to the included 64 gigs micro SD card. And last but not least is a USB Type-C charge cable. We recommend using this cable for charging. The Mayu Mini is available in two colours, Snow White and Retro Grey. It measures 2.5 by 3.6 by 0.7 inches and weighs 110 grams. The screen is a 2.8 inch IPS display with a 640 by 480 resolution. It actually looks quite nice for retro gaming. Below is your classic D-pad with select and start buttons. There are four gaming buttons and a menu button in the middle. On the left is a volume dial. And on the top is the status LEDs and power button. On the bottom are a 3.5mm headphone jack, micro SD card slot and a USB Type-C port for charging. On the back are your left and right buttons which are traditionally shoulder and trigger buttons. There is also a battery cover making it very easy to replace the battery should you need to. The Mayu Mini is powered by an ARM Cortex A7 dual core processor. There's 128 megs of RAM which doesn't sound much but it's fine for the OS and most of the supported consoles. It comes with a 64 gigs micro SD card ready to use and the Mayu Mini supports up to 128 gigs if you wish to use your own. The 2000 mAh battery lasts for up to 5 hours which of course depends on the emulator you are playing. Let's first take a brief look at the front end for the Mayu Mini. Once booted up you are at the main menu. The recent option shows a list of recently played games and favourites shows your favourite added games. The games menu shows a list of gaming systems which includes Arcade, Mega Drive, Master System, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, PC Engine and Wonderswan Color. Once inside a console's system menu you are shown a list of games found on the micro SD card. You can scroll through them with the D-pad or skip a page with the trigger buttons on the back of the device. Returning back to the main menu and next is the Retro Arch menu which uses different emulators to those in the game menu. Again you can browse the games and pick one to load. There are two more options on the menu if you scroll to the right. The apps menu as a file manager, access to the Retro Arch settings and a power menu to safely shut down. The final option is the settings menu which allows you to change various settings including the brightness, theme colours, language, key mapping, factory reset and buttons test. So how well does the Mayu Mini emulate the popular consoles of past years? Let's find out with some emulator tests. There's a whole bunch of Eastern Market arcade games that I have never really played much. A random one I am playing appears to be called Charlie Ninja. I tried a few random games and did not have any issues with the games running or then running too slow. Everything seems to be working great. MAME has many popular western arcade games on it that I know and love, so I was in more familiar territory. Again, I tried a few random games including one of my favourites which is OutRun and did not see any issues with performance. We can't try the Mega Drive without showing Sonic the Hedgehog. I tried a few different games and as expected I ran into no issues with compatibility or performance. I would not expect anything less.
Neo Geo is up next and everything seems to be working fine. There are some slowdowns which are due to the original hardware rather than the actual Mini's performance. Other than that, the games are working fine. Everything on the Neo Geo Pocket will work also just fine. The games actually look good on this display, which is a godsend if you've ever tried the original Pocket handheld, which does not have a backlit screen. Again, you will have no issues with PC Engine games, everything I tried runs great. The Wonderswan Colour is another system that you will have no issues with at all. And another where you can actually see the screen and like the original Wonderswan handheld. CPS3 games take a little longer to load compared to others. Just give it a few moments while it extracts the zip file and loads all of the files. That seems to be my only complaint, as everything else works fine. PlayStation 1 is where we start to see some games working and not working. It depends on the compatibility mainly on how well it performs. However, if you use the RetroArch Core PCSX, the compatibility improves a great deal. But you will still have games with performance issues. One thing I wanted to mention is that you can upgrade the firmware to a custom one, which improves a number of things. If you do update the firmware, then you will find a few more emulators, including the Atari series, Amstrad CPC, Sega CD and Virtual Boy. It does require flashing the firmware to the device and making a new SD card, so it's not without its risks. But there is a clear step-by-step -step guide on the GitHub page, which we have linked in the description. It's worth considering if you are a fan of the added systems to get the most out of the handheld. By the way, you can learn more about the Mario Mini and buy yours from our store at droix.co.uk or droix.net. We sell a range of retro gaming handhelds which emulate from the earliest right up to more modern systems. So overall I am very impressed with the Mario Mini. It is small and lightweight meaning it's perfect for whilst out and about. For example if you want to play a game while on the train or bus it fits easily inside your jacket pocket for quick access. The display whilst it is small looks fine and the games overall look ok on it. I also like the simplicity of the menu, although it may be a little confusing having both native emulators and retro arch cores to choose from when playing some systems such as PlayStation. What we like most is the price. It is fairly cheaper than other devices which are generally in the £100 price mark. And apart from some higher end consoles supported in those handhelds, they basically do the same job for the 8 and 16 bit systems. If you don't want to break the bank or want a truly portable retro handheld, then the Mayu Mini is definitely one to consider. That wraps up our Mayu Mini video, we hope you have found it useful. If you have not already, please subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in our next one.